people to do it. I oh, guess. thank you. <coughs> Great. Um, and and we don't actually. Um, I would love for you to tell me more about the the team at Harbinger. Um, Yogesh, you tell me. Sure. Right? So, yeah. Uh, so this is Yogesh. I'm basically from the uh, from the front ending side. I was the one who actually got in touch with Margaret, and then you know this project or the opportunity got uh, actually generated. Uh, I basically handled the business development and the commercial aspect of the company. Uh, we have Tanmay uh, Ditti who will be working on this project. Tanmay is our senior project manager. So, uh, you know, he would be uh, making sure that uh, all the project management and, uh, you know, the timeline projects are uh, are in control. That's what the Tanmay would do. The day-to-day -day activity and, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day leadership role would be taken by Dipti. Uh, she is uh, our project lead on this project, so mm -hmm. she's also on call. Uh, Rahul uh, Panse, uh, he's uh, also one of our, you know, senior members in the team. Uh, his role is to you know, basically, he's going to actually observe the project from a distance, uh, making sure that you know we all are, you know, following the timelines. We all are meeting the the targets that we have decided while working on this project. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so all in all, this is the so, team yeah. that you would be communicating. Uh, uh, mostly, Dipti would be your point of contact, Sandlin, uh, okay. for your data communication. Great, and thank you. Yogesh, this is Margaret. Um, will who will actually be developing the storyboards and that sort of thing? Okay, so we would have an instructional designer uh, who would be assigned to this project, and uh, that person would be doing the storyboarding. So eventually, probably, you know, as we progress, as we submit you the uh, probably the project plan and next steps. Uh, in next few days, you know, you would be introduced with the instructional designer as well. If required, you might uh, be also introduced with some of our other team members. Okay. Great. Thank you. That would that would be great to have some direct contact with the people who are actually developing the simulation. Yeah, sure. In fact, you know, <laughs> Thank you. this would be very hands-on. She would be. Oh, okay. Uh, but, so we just want to make sure that you have a single point of contact rather than you talking to everybody in the sure. project. So sure, sure. If they would Great. be coordinating Thank the activities, the day-to-day -day activities and the project management on a day-to-day basis. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. So um, maybe now would be a good time for Margaret to give us just a little overview of of the grant that we're working on and why we've chosen to to do simulations in the first place. Margaret. Sure. So we have a – I'll give you the very short version. We have a, a grant to promote health IT education in the U.S., and um, we are looking to these simulations to provide students in allied health, nursing, IT and health IT programs, some exposure to uh, EHR systems, some exposure and some hands-on practice with EHR systems. And these will um, ultimately be made available across the country to any colleges who would like to use them. So um, we're excited that these products will get uh, very wide use. And they'll be non proprietary, so they'll, they'll be open source with a Creative Commons license. Yeah, it's an exciting project. Um, do you guys have any questions about that? And as of now. Okay. Um, then um, Tan may have mentioned you guys wanted to give a, a presentation. Would now be a good time for that? Yeah, certainly. So if we can just uh, hand out the presentation, uh, uh, presenter details to Dipti, uh, she'll share her screen. Um, Margaret, if you would remind me how I make Dipti the presenter. Uh, 
I did it. Oh, thank you. Great. So can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Um, you'll need to do share desktop. There we go. There we go. The screen? Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so we'll start off with this quick short presentation. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is the agenda for the call. Um, so we have already uh, gone through the introductions for this project. So mainly we have Yogesh, Tanmay, and myself who would be uh, corresponding with uh, the team at Bellevue. And I believe three of you from there also would be corresponding with us. So I will skip this slide and the next slide as well uh, because I would be dealing with you on a daily basis wherein Tanmay would just have an overall perspective of the project. This slide talks about the project overview. So uh, I'm sure all of us know this, but then I'll just run through a few points. Uh, we would be developing approximately six interactive online EMR simulations. Uh, I would need to get an exact count if it's going to be six or it's going to be split further. Uh, the total seat time stays at six hours, and it would be at level 3.5. Uh, the entire architecture would be HTML5 XML based, which I'm sure Tanmay must have already told you about. Um, we then go ahead with the course content. So we would have content screens, which would be uh, informative screens, followed by a few interactive and uh, show me and let me try screens. And the course would end with an assessment. So the steps which we would follow for this particular project would be we need to first decide the instructional uh, approach decision that has to be taken, followed by which the storyboard would either be fine-tuned or we would have to create it. and. Uh, then we would use Captivate to record the EMR simulation. And finally, we would program the Let Me Try and Test Me sections, all to be integrated within the HTML5 architecture. Uh, the entire course would be SCOM 1.2 compliant, and the testing would be done at our end on the ADL test suite or the Moodle elements. That's because we do not have access to the Blackboard elements. So uh, is there anything else you want to ask me on this slide, or should I proceed? Uh, please proceed. Thank you. Um, hi, this is Tanmay here again. I, so uh, feel I'm, free to ask us at any Margaret. time if you feel that you have any questions. Yes, hi, hi. I'm sorry. This is Margaret. If we could go back to the last slide. Sorry, I was on mute. I um, So... Just a comment about the six interactive online simulations. It, it won't be six. It'll be um, six hours total. Uh, the range will probably be, it'll probably be more like eight simulations, but we're still working out the details on one of the systems. Um, yeah. And I also wanted to know if you've seen our guidelines and our storyboard, because it's a little bit different than just show me, let me try, test me. It has yeah, certainly. A, so, uh, uh, yeah, we have gone through the input material that we have already received, and as a logical step, uh, next step that we are going to follow is uh, the instruction designer lead uh, from our team who is going to work on his project will we'll go through the input content and will make sure that we are using the same terminologies that uh, we are using in your storyboards. And we'll make sure that uh, all your needs and requirements are getting uh, addressed, fulfilled uh, with, with the instructional approach, as well as with the storyboards that we are going to proceed with. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Great. So now we move on to the next slide. Uh, this talks about the process we follow at Harbinger. So every project runs through these five stages, which uh, are on the screen. So the first stage would be the project initiation, which is already done. This is where the contract is signed, the SOW is created, and the team is formed. So this step is already done. Then move on to the next step, which is the project planning. So in the planning, we are currently at the project kickoff phase. After the kickoff uh, call, I would then you know, draft a project scope and a project plan document. 
the instructional designers would work on the instructional design document and would come up with a detailed content outline as well. Uh, once we receive the um, branding guidelines and the color palette to be followed at the college, we would come up with the graphical design document and the last one would be the test plan which we would be following. Uh, following. Yeah, so uh, just to add to what Dipti said, currently uh, all these processes which is ID, DCO as well as GDD and test plan uh, will go in parallel. Uh, just in uh, just for the GDD part, we'll require your branding guidelines and all the marketing uh, details that you want us to follow uh, for the basic branding for this particular modules. And uh, in parallel, IDs will work on the IDD and DCO, and uh, the senior QA testers will work on the test yes. plan and the checklist creation. And the last step would be the... Uh... Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, there is some uh, background uh, noise in the... I wanted to check that we are audible. Uh, so should I proceed? Uh, yes, please proceed. Thank you. So uh, for this particular project, we would create a prototype. Uh, in case the first module which we would be developing is small, we can consider that to be a prototype. Otherwise, we will consider a small part of a big module, and we will share that with you before we start you know, work on the other modules. <coughs> so once we get your approval on the prototype, that sets the base for the course development. Yeah, so why do we want to have this prototype phase is just to make sure that, you know, we are uh, in the right direction. Uh, and all the requirements are as per uh, your... As per requirements. So how we will treat uh, a particular content for this prototype is there will be two parts to the prototype. One, a logical chunk where we will see how uh, a logical flow will get appeared in a particular module. And we'll try... Uh, the other part will have uh, the all type of templates or type of screens that are going to be there in the all these six hours or all these eight modules. So we'll try to see that we are incorporating everything inside this prototype. Uh, we would want you to uh, test this prototype early on all your targeted devices through your uh, LMS so that, you know, if, if there, has a, there is any compatibility issues or functionality changes that needed to be done at both the ends, at LMS end or at course end, we are way ahead in time <clears throat> to do all these things rather than checking for all those things at the end uh, of, of those modules. <clears throat> so this prototype phase is going to be a little crucial for both the team. Does this sound good? I I agree. It sounds like a really crucial and important step. I'm I'm glad you you look forward to the feedback early in the project. I think that'll help us keep on track as we move forward in our timelines. Um, can I ask about how long do you expect the prototyping stage to last? Uh, it, it will be a small prototype phase, so uh, I would I would rather say that right after the project plan and I did DCO creation, GD, or graphical user interface uh, creation and a test plan phase, we'll directly jump into the prototype phase. What we'll make sure is if we receive that the first module is of, uh, let's assume that it's a one hour duration module, so we'll take a 15 minute chunk from the same module so, uh, so that, you know, even if we are spending more time on the prototype, uh, the efforts are not going west because we'll use the same. Uh, we are using the same content, which is of the first module. So the first Great. module will be a little quicker uh, than expected. Once okay. The I like that approach. Thanks. The next stage is the project execution. Uh, this is where the deliverables would be issued to the college. And we would have four deliverables, as you see. The first one would be the prototype. And then we would have the alpha, beta, and the gold builds, which would be issued to you. Uh, once the alpha build is issued, we would you know, expect your feedback on that build, which I think should take not more than two to three days. Post that, we would implement the feedback, and that would uh, you know, make the beta build in place. The same process for, is applicable for the beta build as well. The feedback on the beta build would mark the gold build. And that marks the uh, last the last uh, deliverable for a particular module. 
Is this clear? Um, so I, I guess I'm a little unclear actually about how the, the alpha version and gold version are, are different. Um, I, and I appreciate that you'll be taking our feedback to each of those stages. Are there other components that you expect to change? Like the alpha version is not 100% completed? Yeah. Um, good, good tell me question more about here. that. Yeah, good question here. How we plan for alpha and gold is uh, basically once we are uh, freezing on the storyboard, we directly uh, we do not directly jump into the audio recording. What we made mm -hmm. sure is that we record all the uh, required audio with a machine generated software that we have at our end, and uh, we create an alpha build, which is a functional alpha build as per the storyboard, which you can uh, test, review at your end, and can see if everything is in aligned with uh, your requirements. If you see that there are uh, a little Tweaks to be needed, uh, tweaks that are needed, or uh, you see that uh, oh, we have you know approved the storyboards. There are a few things that we need to change in the audio script. We still get some time uh, uh, to do those changes. And once we are through the alpha and beta, we then uh, try to uh, make sure that we record all the audios at a goal phase, so that uh, uh, if if this is just in case that. You know, if, if we record uh, audio at an alpha stage and we see that, you know, there are some audio changes needed, it, it would have been uh, the re-recording session uh, and will have an additional cost associated to it. So we just made sure that uh, the audio recording will be at the end uh, of any delivery. So it will be at the gold phase. So in the alpha and beta, we will have a machine-generated audio where we still have, uh, both the teams still have time to make sure that the audio script is as per needed. Uh, if there is no change, we'll directly move into the goal phase. Uh, at times, in few of the models, we have seen that few of the uh, versions get approved at alpha stage, and it's just the audio that needs to be incorporated now uh, with the human gen uh, human uh, voice or artist, and uh, that is the goal phase. Great. Does thank that you. answer? Yeah, it does answer my question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the next stage is the project controlling phase. This is, uh, I mean, a daily activity wherein I and Tanmay would, you know, monitor the progress of the project. We would see in case it is being deviated from the, you know, the actual plan. And uh, we would also keep a track on the scope creep. So in case of any kind of scope changes, that would have to be addressed, you know, in, uh, on a daily basis or when are required. Um, we would also have uh, weekly status reports and status meetings. So this is how you understand what has happened through a current week and what has been planned, what is being planned for the next week as well. So we will be sharing a weekly status report with you probably of, uh, on every Friday or last working day of a particular week. Uh, and this weekly status report will have three elements. One, uh, what is the complete health of a project? Uh, second, uh, what was planned for the week and where we at? And third, what is planned for the next week and are we on track? So it will make sure okay. that we both uh, are on the same page. As well as we uh, do conduct a weekly status meeting, which uh, Ipti will be sharing a few time slots uh, with you right after this call. If you have any preference, uh, you, you can you can let us know that or you can select any time slot which Dipti will be uh, forwarding to you. And we'll meet every week uh, that time to make sure that we are discussing about the project health. Great, thank you. Okay, so I'm moving on to the last stage, that would be the project closure. So once all the modules are delivered, that is the gold bills are delivered, we would uh, you know, provide all the source files to you. And we would also have a project closer meeting, which would, you know, be with all the teams who have worked on this particular project. Do you have any doubts so, in any of the pitches? Just one quick question. I'm assuming that we'll get um, the the source files and the the published files. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, the published file you'll get uh, at every stage, in alpha, beta, and gold. Uh, and at a close stage, we you will receive uh, source, source files, files along with the published files. Thank you. 
So uh, we then move on to the project management process. So I think most of the points have been covered in the earlier slides, like the weekly progress report. Uh, Tanmay would be, you know, uh, talking about the monthly customer feedbacks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll share a, a feedback sheet with you uh, just to make sure that uh, we receive your feedback and value your feedback. So if, uh, those, those feedback, there will be a few questions, just a, a, a simple questions uh, about the each department, as in instruction design department, uh, graphic the design. graphic design department, uh, programming, project management, about everything, that what is your feedback. So I just, I just gather that every month and we'll make sure that uh, we are on the same page at both the ends. Yeah, and then we move on to the last point, that is the delivery methodology. So we would uh, deliver all the files, all the courses to you over the FTP, which is very secure. So I will uh, have the IT team create a username and password so that you can access the FTP, and we can share data using the FTP. So any kind of storyboard, documents, images, anything which you want to share with us, you can put it onto the FTP and we will do the same. Um, the next point is the delivery plan. This is a project plan which I will share, uh, you know, in the next couple of days once I get certain inputs from you. And the delivery notification involves, I mean, once a course is uploaded onto the FTP, I will notify this either via an email or via Skype. Yeah, definitely on email, uh, just in case we see that there is some uh, network, problem. network problem with the emails, we'll try to see that if you're on uh, the Skype, we'll, we'll communicate through that. Um, strangely, our, our campus will not load Skype onto our computers, and we don't have admin access to do it. That's, that's completely fine, so, because Skype is just okay. a backup plan. Uh, we do share uh, each and every notification via mm -hmm. an email, and the... Uh, Second in line, uh, communication line will be a, a phone call. So just in case we see that okay. our, our emails are having a problem, we'll directly call you up. Great. Thank you very much. Um, now we need to talk about the critical success factors for this particular project. Uh, I have divided this across three regions. One would be the content related. So it is necessary that we receive all the input material. Would that I mean that can be storyboards, assets, images, everything, at least a couple of weeks prior to our storyboard development at our end, because we need these two weeks to understand the content and come up with any queries and get them addressed, so that it does not delay the project any further. Um, I think uh, we would also need a training on the EMR system, followed by you know any kind of supporting documents or the user guide. So we can plan this meeting sometime this week. Uh, the next point would be the reviews. Um, as So like I had mentioned, so once any build is issued to you, uh, you would have to tell me you know, the number of days you would take to review a particular module. So it is necessary that we get timely and collated reviews. So I would expect like a single, an ex single Excelis from Bellevue College which details all the review comments. Because in the past, we have had cases where, you know, two, three people from a particular team sharing different review comments, and some of them are conflicting. So it is necessary that we have a single Excelis, which is generated from a single, I mean, you know, a collated sheet. Okay. And um, this is Margaret. I just had a, a couple of questions, and I, I we totally understand the need for combined, unified comments in one document. Um, so... Draft storyboards. So can we talk about that a little bit? Because we, um, <clears throat> I, I thought that Harbinger would do the storyboards. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we are going to do the storyboards. Uh, uh, the raw content uh, that we'll receive, the raw input material that we are going to use, receive, uh, she uh, I have termed that as a draft storyboard. She has storyboard. termed it as a draft, draft storyboard. storyboard. So we are not treating them as draft storyboards. That will be a complete raw input content for us, and we are going to do the storyboarding on, on top of that. Okay. So if if we provided the um, the topics and the objectives and and that sort of thing and the the tasks to be done and provided you with the resources, you'll take it from there. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes. Okay, great. And then, um, let's see, training on the EMR system. <clears throat> um, the, the first system <clears throat> is pretty 
uh, straightforward, and we're thinking we'll provide an orientation, an overview of the system and how it's organized, and then uh, provide you with some additional materials that you can look through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, okay. I guess uh, even Sadlin has uh, mentioned in her meeting that uh, she needed a call later this week uh, between our IDs and your team uh, when we'll have this training on. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Sandlin, if you can uh, just let us know if, uh, your preferred time slot for the same. Uh, sure. We'll, we'll make sure that our team is available. Okay, great. Thank you. We are fine with tomorrow morning your time as well. Uh, yes, I am fine with tomorrow morning. Yeah, and uh, the second point under the review section would be a central point of contact. So uh, I pres I believe it will be Sandlin uh, San in this case. Uh, yeah, that will be me. Okay, great. And the last point is the scope change. So uh, in every phase, we would you know accept up to five percent changes of the total project efforts. Anything which is beyond five percent would be charged. Yeah, I mean uh, we, that's a that's a uh, definitely a call we take uh, uh, at every stage. So if we if we we are receiving any change request, we'll try to see that if it is uh, somewhere between the five percent of the total project efforts. Uh, we'll try to absorb, absorb definitely, and this can be discussed uh, before we implement all those changes. Do you have any questions on that? Yes. Would, would, this is Margaret. Would you be able to give us um, an example or two of a scope change? Yeah, I mean, scope change could be anything between. Uh, the textual changes to any functional changes. So let's let's assume that we have freezed upon uh, the storyboard. We have approved. We received the approved storyboards. We have delivered the alpha version, and in the feedback of alpha or beta, we uh, we, we receive a, a comment which says that you know uh, though we have approved uh, this particular functionality the way it is written into the storyboard. Now we see that uh, we wanted to you know have it a little differently. And if that that is a functionality change which requires an extra effort, and if if those are lying beyond five percent, uh, then we uh, discuss those with you before we implement that uh, with you. Okay. Stanton, Vivian, did you have any additional questions on that? Um, I just want to be clear. This is Vivian. Um, I'd just like to be clear that. Um, that doesn't affect if we get on a, a, at alpha stage if we're reviewing it and we have um, we find we have considerable changes at alpha does that affect the five percent or is that considered normal for an alpha change? Uh, there are two parts to it one uh, issues or bugs we call them and the other is changes so if you see that uh, there is a significant amount of changes or bugs uh, that you have found out into the uh, the alpha modules, definitely we'll try to uh, make sure that uh, you know uh, we, we we resolve them with no cost associated with it because those are bugs and issues. But if there are any changes, we try to see that how many percentage of changes are there, uh, what is the number of changes uh, that we have received, and we uh, take a decision on a case to case basis. If if we see that the number of changes that are received. <laughs> It's minor. Uh, if 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 you see that it's a minor change, uh, but in numbers those are more. Then uh, we we think on the timeline again. But I don't think that it will affect the timeline on the whole. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, this is Yogesh. Uh, uh, I think at this stage I must mention that uh, why it is very important to. Uh, do the reviews at the storyboard or a very rigorous reviews at the storyboard stage itself. So if you want to actually suggest any changes, add new functionalities, you know, you are free to do that in the storyboard phase because we have not started the development till that time. 
so you have you know a lot of time reviewing that storyboard uh, but after that i think we all have to be really careful and make sure that you know we are following the timelines and that is the reason any change uh, you know which happens after the storyboarding is actually going to affect the timeline so we request all of you to be you know extra careful and probably you know ask as many questions as you want at the storyboard level itself yes okay you rightly said yogesh so should i proceed any more doubts no i think we're good um this talks about the escalation plan so in case you have any kind of uh, issues with the way the team works or there is something which you want uh, tanmay to be aware of you can directly get in touch with him this is for the project related aspects any kind of commercial related uh, things have to be discussed with yogesh let me tell you one thing with dipti on board uh, for this particular project uh, definitely we you will not require this escalation plan uh, she is very capable of handling this projects uh, at at a very good pace and she she works very closely with client as well as with the internal team here so this is just a backup plan <laughs> <laughs> thanks anyway um uh, we are talking about now out of scope uh, activities for this particular project uh, any kind of changes to the uh, approved storyboards after or during the development we have already discussed yeah, about it so yeah so this is the 5% thing uh we also would not be uploading the courses onto the bellevue's uh, lms that would be done by you people and the testing as well on the lms uh on the lms means uh, on the blackboard uh, lms uh, yeah at bellevue college's lms we will be testing it internally with the adl test suite uh, as well as with the internal moodle lms that we have in place the last three points talk about the on site visit any kind of video recording 3d animations are not within the scope for this project do you have any doubts on this slide uh, excuse me this is Vivian um, i just want to be clear i didn't quite the on site visit video recording and 3d animations on out of scope not part of the project is that correct yeah is that what i okay i just want to be sure i heard right thank you okay. um so now we need to talk about uh, how do we proceed with this particular project the first point would be the emr demo which uh, sandlin would you know uh, plan for sometime this week ideally tomorrow then uh, i would need the input materials for this particular course i have a few dates in mind but if you if i could just get a list of all the courses which have to be developed along with the date on which i would receive the storyboards that would be very helpful Uh, once i receive that i'll be able to create a detailed project plan which would uh, you know detail the alpha beta as well as the goal date and of course the prototype uh tanmay has spoken about the documentation so that also would happen in parallel during this week and through next week uh this project being a us based project we would share a few uh, us american voice over samples with you for which i would need your approval so post the beta phase we would go i mean based on the voice over artist chosen we would go ahead with the voice over recording for the gold bills uh i would also need the branding guidelines and the color palette to be referred to because this would be necessary to create the graphical uh, design document and once we have that in place uh, harbinger would share two gui shell designs with you which you would have to approve one of the two Um, thank you dipti yeah, i have uh, i have two questions for uh, you so uh, for dipti uh, to do a detailed project plan what we would need is a holiday list uh, your holiday list as well as any vacation plan you have uh, so that we'll we'll make sure that we will not keep any of your reviews on those dates we'll try to accommodate uh, those dates uh, in this detailed project plan in such a way that even though you are on a holiday or you are on a vacation uh, we are uh, working on those days uh, we'll try to keep your reviews uh, on the days uh, where you are available plus i would need uh, your uh, review turnaround time so that uh, dipti will uh, make sure that in her detailed project plan she'll give you enough uh, 
time to review the storyboards, the alpha version, prototype, uh, beta, and the gold. Yeah, so you could give me the dates across the alpha, beta, and gold, and the prototypes. I would need four such review dates, and uh, I would need to know the exact dates on which we would receive the input material for a particular module. That will help us uh, jot down the detailed project plan, uh, complete six hours of development. <coughs> mm -hmm. Um, and when, sorry, when would you like those dates? Uh, earlier the better. I mean, if as you can send time. it uh, by today itself, uh, she, she can write, uh, she can start on uh, developing the project plan uh, from tomorrow morning our time. Okay. Um, we can probably provide you many of those dates, but um, as Margaret has mentioned, uh, we're still working out the use of the second EMR system, and so we're not entirely clear when we'll have those materials based on um, sort of some other challenges we're having with that system. So um, I think that the second half of the project is unfortunately going to be a little vague for at least a couple more weeks. Okay. And what about the initial part of the, I mean, Modules, are those dates fixed? I mean, do you have anything in mind? Um, for our first six weeks, I think uh, we can absolutely make a, a solid project plan. Um, we have our materials in hand and ready um, and, and understand our schedule. So I'll send you all of those things, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that um, as, as the project goes on, I will continue to keep you updated as soon as we get more information so that you can be updating your schedule as well. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Also, if you can just uh, let us know the holiday list and the vacation plan, if you have any. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, this is what about weekly uh, status meeting. So we, we plan for a weekly status meeting. So just a, a question that what time and date you feel that uh, in, in a week uh, you feel that we can have a weekly status meeting. Okay. Um, and just to be clear, who would you like actually to attend the the weekly status meeting? Uh, it would be between uh, Andleen and Dipti, um, uh, and I'll be joining in in between as and when needed, as well as uh, different team members. So just in case we are in a storyboard discussion, uh, we are going to okay. have a storyboard this meeting. We'll involve our IDs or the appropriate team member. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. And this yeah. is Margaret. I just had a comment about the the voiceover samples. We we will need more than one narrator because we have multiple characters. I believe we'll have four characters, so we will need four different voices. Certainly. So uh, we 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 will send you uh, different choices uh, with male and female dialect, and uh, you you can select any four uh, from the provided samples. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. So is the, I mean, the main narrator going to be a male or a female? Hmm. We have That's both. A good question. <laughs> we, uh, I guess uh, it would be good uh, if we can provide them uh, both I, I male and female dialect, and then they can uh, go through the samples and can choose uh, what should be the narrator voice. Sure, I'll do that. Maybe early next week I'll share the samples with you. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm done with my presentation. Do you have any questions? Um, I, I think I'm good. I, Vivian or Margaret might have other things to add in, but, but thank you for, for going through that. I think we got a lot of those questions as they came up. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm good, too. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so, Margaret, if you would help me, thank you. Um, so next on, on the agenda, and I, I'm trying to be mindful of the time, um, would it be helpful at this stage for us to spend a few minutes going over our guidelines, or um, would you prefer that we do that in a, a status meeting at a different time?
Uh, we still have uh, around 15, 20 minutes. So if, if that is something which we can cover up within this time, we are fine to go. Okay. Um, then let us just dive in. Um, give me a moment while I pull up our storyboard template and share that with you. Um, so hopefully you're seeing my screen now? Yes, yes we can. Great. Um, so <clears throat> as we mentioned, we, we've been sort of thinking about uh, how to put together these uh, simulations uh, with several different types of interactivity in mind. Um, and I hope that Margaret and Vivian will jump in with me here. Um, in terms of uh, sort of the general layout of the course, we understand that, that it should probably start with some navigation sort of information. Um, like, here's how you deal with this course. Uh, we are hoping to write the learning objectives for all of the simulations. So uh, we'll provide that information to you that should appear at the front of every simulation. Um, and then we have several different types of um, of interactivity we would like to be able to show, and and as Margaret's mentioned, the sort of naming conventions we would like to use for those. Um, the the one that um, we're hoping will work well in your system, but I suppose we haven't really seen demonstrated is um, what we're calling hover to discover. Uh, that is, a student would mouse over an image and either click or just leave the mouse hovering, um, and there would be a pop-up sort of like this that would explain more, give kind of the alt text version of this is where you see this kind of um, information. Um, Sandlin, do you want to show an example of the call-outs that would go with that? Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> Um, but that's yeah, okay if you don't have them in this version. Uh, yeah, I think they maybe didn't end up in this version. So um, basically, hover to discover the the learner <clears throat> would hover over different menu items and call out boxes would pop up, mm -hmm. saying what what those menu items do. Yeah. Oh, for example, um, in the this is an example, right? The the student would see this image, which is sort of the main screen. Um, and um, I'll give you a moment to sort of absorb. Like, there's a calendar, and there's a message box, and there's this menu. And then as they click on each of those things, like the menu like the message, like the calendar, they would get um, just a brief sort of explanation of this is what that does. Okay. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're hoping to sort of use that as a, an orientation piece as students move into new screens and, and new menus that they would get a kind of a, a brief understanding of that. Um, and then as Margaret has mentioned, we're hoping to introduce each of these concepts using a character. So um, uh, in, in most cases, the student just has the, the feeling that this character is walking them through what the process is and how that works. Uh, so um, th it's not exactly a, like a role playing, um, but we did want um, the student to, to get the sensation that they're getting uh, the experience from uh, somebody who who does this on a regular basis. So we've got different characters for each of these drafts that we've sent you. Um, what else am I missing to pull out, Margaret? Um, the workflow diagrams. Yes, thank you. Um, so um, let's see, early in, in every in every storyboard, so this is just after the orientation, um, 
students will get exposed to the, the workflow, which explains um, in the, the regular process of a patient visit or in the regular process of whatever task they're dealing with, um, here are the choices that they make. And our hope is that um, some of these critical boxes, particularly that are related to um, the, the simulations that student is experiencing, they can click on any of these boxes and then be taken to the hover to discover activity. Um, I'm not entirely sure if, if that will be technically possible for you. Does, does that make yeah, sense? Definitely. Yeah, definitely that uh, makes sense. We'll, we'll definitely check it with the uh, uh, technical team out here. Okay. Uh, we'll let you know. Great. Okay. Um, that, that would be a nice way for us to add some interactivity and our hope um, is also that um, in sort of the, the navigation menu buttons, uh, you know, the, the forward, back, play, pause kind of things, that there would be a link back to this workflow so that students could get reoriented um, if, if they feel like they're getting lost in the, the weeds as that is. Um, and then the, the one other element that um, we'd like to include, which I, I don't think would be a, a big change from your standard approach, is a review option. Mm. Um, so after, at a couple of different junctures, and we have it outlined in the guideline, we'd like to give learners the option to review. Mm -hmm. Um, and our sense would, would, is that that review basically takes them back to the demonstration that they just saw, so they can just watch that yeah. again. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so um, much like you guys have described, we, we want to see students sort of get the, they see the demonstration, they get um, a very coached, chance to walk through it, and then at the end of the, the assessment that they're given is um, to repeat the process, but with less coaching, sort of more on their own. Um, and that's what we're calling, um, did I get this? <clears throat> um, do you have questions for us at this time? Uh, no, I mean, we, I, I see that uh, it's, it's just the terminologies that we are using differently here, but mm -hmm. we are pretty much uh, on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, great. And obviously, we'll keep talking about this, I'm sure, as uh, we continue to develop um, that material. So, um, Margaret, unless you think there's something I'm missing, I'm going to stop sharing this. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Great. Um, so then there was just a few other things I wanted to make sure that we talked about in this meeting. Um, um, so we, we wanted to make sure, and it sounds like Deep D is going to help us by setting up the, the project plan documents um, to help us understand um, what are the deliverables on our end that might affect the timeline so we can make sure that, that we're accommodating those well. It sounds like you'll be looking forward to regular reviews from us, um, and then there's several decisions we need to make up front in terms of um, guidelines and, and narration and um, interface type decisions, right? Um, so we'll follow up by email for most of those. Um, let's see, and yeah, and that I suppose is my other question as well. Um, and, and I'll just mention again the, that we're hoping to get simulations in two systems. The first is OpenEMR, which is um, what we've shown. Uh, the Those storyboards are in OpenEMR, and we're using a, an unrelated inpatient system called Vista that um, we as a team are less familiar with and are hoping to be more familiar with in about a month. Um, and we'll update sort of the second half of our timeline at that stage. Um, as I think we've mentioned, we're hoping to get between two and four simulations for that. Um, but it's not clear what we can uh, realistically accomplish there. Um, so I know that, that in terms of what you guys are hoping to deliver, you want to do six hours of content and it would be um, fine if, however, that sort of shakes out. We did, you know, half with open EMR and half with Vista, if that means they're kind of lopsided in terms of time. Would you agree, Margaret? 
Um, I'm, I'm not sure I followed that last part, Sandlin. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to be so clear, uh, because we we don't we can't commit to how many um, simulations will be in Vista. If if they're trying to to make their time target of six hours, how do you propose we help them address that? Um, well, we we need to see how the the first set. So I see the project plan as having two two sections, one for open EMR and we are you know just we have just about everything um, for that that the developers will need um, and we have a, a clear idea of what we want um, and then we'll shift gears in a few weeks to look at Vista and we'll have more clarity on that then. But in terms of whether it's going to shake out that we have three hours in open EMR and three hours in Vista, I, I don't know how that will turn out. It might be uh, four hours in one, two hours in another, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, why we need to know the seed time uh, ahead uh, when we are doing a development uh, project plan uh, just to make sure that we are giving enough time to each team member uh, as per the uh, efforts needed for a particular. So let's let's assume that the efforts that we are going to spend uh, for a, for developing the one hour module is will be lesser than uh, efforts that we are going to spend for a four hour seat time module. Uh huh. It actually helps to plan our resources better. Better. So I guess that's why we would need the seat times in advance. But how will we know the seat times until we have all of the elements recorded? It's completely fine, even if you tell us uh, module by module. Uh, so let's let's assume that we have already shared uh, the input content for the first module. We'll uh, we'll go through uh, that, and uh, our IDs will uh, be able to judge, you know, for, uh, that what is the seat time, seat time, approximate seat time for this particular module, and we'll we'll. Share it accordingly with you, and then we'll do the uh, the planning for the rest um, of the Just modules. to confirm that the three documents I'd received are the final ones to be referred to for the first module, or have you changed they, anything th in they that? They are not. Okay, so by what? They are very they are very rough drafts. Okay, so by when mm -hmm. can I expect the uh, final drafts from you, Samson? I'm not uh, <laughs> sure what. Oh. Um, I, I will um, send you any final edits we've made to those um, by the end of the week, um, but we're not really expecting to flush those out into fully functional storyboards. Um, okay. Correct. So, um, by so, the end of so, so we have we have a couple. We have two different. Types of you know we're we're using the word storyboard um, kind of loosely, so we have a fully some fully fleshed out examples of storyboards so that you all can get a clear idea of what we're looking for, and then the subsequent storyboards for Open EMR will have less content and we'll look to your team to flesh those out. And Sandlin, maybe after this call, we can figure out a timeline on both of those. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I guess that uh, we will uh, during a training call with our IDs, uh, we'll also discuss about the terminologies uh, and uh, the draft storyboard that you discussed right now. Um, oh, great. great. That will be in the uh, that call too. Yeah, because I guess they also would have a couple of queries, so I guess all can be addressed in one call. Great. Um, yeah, so then if we can plan to continue that conversation tomorrow, um, I think we can wrap tomorrow up. Tomorrow totally what? Uh, to have a call? Sure. Would 8 a.m. Um, Washington time be all right for you? At MPST? Yeah. 
let me see my calendar. Can we, can we have it a little earlier than that? Um, possibly as early as 7.30, but much earlier than that, and I won't be very bright. How about 7.30? Would that fi be fine? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Then 7.30 a.m. PST tomorrow. Great. Thank you. And, and, and that'll be for, for the orientation as well? Sorry, I missed on that. Yeah, that would be for the orientation as well. Yeah. And uh, so we I have a request here. If you can just share the uh, the recording of this complete meeting with us. Uh, oh, sure. We can, share we can share it with the uh, ID team and the development team out here so that we'll make sure that we are not missing on any of the points that we have discussed uh, in the kickoff meeting. Great. Wonderful. Um, and uh, while we're wrapping up, I have um, a very brief note from Heather about invoicing. Um, who is the person who will be in charge of invoicing? Uh, sorry. Uh, so you're asking about who will be the person from our end uh, who will be doing the invoicing? Yeah. Okay. So I'll be the one who will raise the invoices. Uh, to our finance department, and our finance department will raise it to uh, you. So, do you want okay. uh, to directly? Uh, great. Uh, so, she wanted to make sure that both Patricia and Helen, um, our executive director and our finance person, uh, get copied on all those POs. So, I'll send you Tanmay those directions directly to make sure you have them. That will help. <clears throat> okay. Um, so then um, it's 9.30 now. I think we've had a very productive meeting. Are there any other questions from anyone else? I know um, I'll be expecting to speak with both Tanmay and Diti and possibly some more members of your team tomorrow morning at 7.30. Yes, great. Yes. Uh, in fact, we have shared the content with our uh, instructional design team, so uh, hopefully we'll have more questions for tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> great. I look forward to it. Um, well, thank you all for, for your input today. I'm really excited about this project and really looking forward to working with you. I think we're going to make some some really interesting instruction. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. We are excited, too. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. you actually put off the call? Margaret, you still there? I am. Right. So, uh, very quickly, uh, we have accepted all your terms in the contract, uh, I think. Uh, the other thing about uh, the delayed payment interest, I think we are ready to waive it off. So you can delete that part. Thank and you. We are good to go about the storyboard as well. Uh, sorry, the statement of work. I think on that as well, we have accepted all your terms and conditions. So uh, if you are okay. Yes, and you can send me the signed copy if possible tonight. Uh, I mean, our tonight, you are your afternoon. And then you know I can return it to you by tomorrow. I will uh, try my best. We'll have to. We have to see. You know, if our VP, hopefully our VP is in the office today and able to sign. Um, it might be tomorrow because uh, they're on. A, they're at a different location. Yogesh, if you were local, I'd I'd uh, share a bottle of champagne with you. <laughs> the, the contract. Um, we'll do that. We'll do that sometime probably when I'll be visiting. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.